Hi there, this is Gregor from Personus and today I want to talk to you about the hidden gems of Studio One. Certain features that I love using but that not a lot of people are aware of yet. Check them out. Now the first cool tip I want to show you today is hidden in the keyboard commands. And I know that a couple of people are kind of hesitant to go into this section. But just remember that you don't have to memorize all of these by heart and that you can customize them to your liking. So if you always press your spacebar for play and pause, then just put your next favorite hotkey in close proximity and learn that one and go from there. Every hotkey that you add to your setup is a massive boost for your workflow. And especially this one, which I want to show you now, and that's page up skip and down skip. And I have them on shift page up and down, but once again, you can assign them to any other key that you like. And at first glance, they just seem to be, you know, for the mixer section to go to your rightmost or leftmost channel, but it's much more than that. So when I'm going to my channel here, my Impact XT, and I switch to the insert effects chain, I can use the exact same key command to go to the next or previous um, insert in the chain. This is really powerful, especially when you combine it with the good old right and left arrow keys to go to the next channel. And this really allows you to browse the entirety of your insert effects incredibly quickly. I love it. What I really enjoy about Studio One is that I don't have a strict one-to-one -one relationship between my tracks, which you see here, and my channels. That means I can compose all of my different drum elements in just one track, but I still have the full mixing control with separate outputs for my kick drum, my snare drum and so forth. Now the issue I have is that there's no easy way for me apparently to hide all these multi-channels at once without also creating the same amount of tracks and then hiding them that way. Fortunately, there's a really nice workaround for this. Go to the Instruments tab and we're gonna drag any of these instruments, it really doesn't matter which one, onto our existing one. Now we're gonna choose the Combine option, which is also what we do when we want to create a multi-instrument. And if you wanna learn more about multi-instruments, I've pasted you a link to my tutorial covering this extensively in the video description. All right, so once we've done that, we can safely take this instrument out again and remove it. The only thing we wanted from this is to get this channel folder, right? Because essentially multi-instruments are nothing else but a folder that's consolidating multiple channels to just one so that you can basically summarize multiple virtual instruments that are perceived as the same sound and compose them in the same track in your arrangement. So let me just go ahead and do just that. So I extract the instrument or remove it right away. And now I'm gonna call it Impact XT. And voila, that's all there is to it. Now I can expand my channels if I need to see them and collapse them when I don't. Now, because I don't wanna do this every time, what I can do from here is just drag my little loop and get that into the file section of my browser. Once I've done that, Studio One is creating a preview file for me like it would with any audio loop. But the key difference here is that when I recall it in, say, a completely different song, I'm actually recalling the entire Impact XT virtual instrument together with all the channels, the channel folder, which is what we wanted, and all the insert effects and use samples and presets. It's absolutely brilliant. And of course, this also works for other virtual instruments with multi-outs, not just Impact XT. All right, so that's the beat I have going on here from Impact. And I wanna add a couple more elements here. Maybe with this snare drum over here. But I wanna do so with a couple of varieties that I could probably not play uh, if I did it by hand. So there, another hidden gem of Studio One comes in really handy, and that's the note repeat menu. You're gonna find that by clicking on the record panel, um, this little cockwheel symbol over here, and it's right here next to the record mode options for audio and instrument tracks. So to start, hit activate, and then click on the little wrench tool here. 
And now I'm gonna go to the single mode, which means that the last played element of my drum kit, in this case D1 for snare low, is going to be repeated depending on which note I'm playing. So if I'm playing D1 on my keyboard, uh, it would repeat in quarter notes and the higher I go, the faster the repeats. I also have triolic repeats here available. And you can play some very expressive and interesting grooving stuff with that. Let me show you. Yeah, super fun as you can see. All right, so now that we have our beat going on, I'd like to add a bass line to that. And sometimes I don't wanna do that from scratch. Instead, I wanna just utilize a couple of other ideas I've worked on in the past. And I can do that in an incredibly cool and easy way in Studio One. So we switch to the Instruments tab here in our Studio One browser. And then it's as simple as dragging the Mai Tai onto an empty song space. It's gonna create the instrument track for me. And now I can play it from my MIDI keyboard next to me. But like I said, I don't want to come up with something entirely new from scratch. So let me go to my Files tab instead. And now I'm in my uh, song folder. These are old and new ideas that I was currently working on. And I know for a fact that there's one of these songs called <laughs> one of my all-time favorites, where I used a couple of bass lines that I really like. And I would like to hear them with the sound of the Mai Tai that I have just imported into my project. And that's really, really easy. You can just open up the song file by clicking here and I can access each and every instrument that I've used in this track, but not just that, I can also access all the presets for channels, synths, external devices, and even performances. So performances is all the media information that is played in the song. And I'm gonna go to the bass because I know I had a really cool bass line there. And if I double click these now, I can actually hear them played from the instrument I have currently selected. Isn't that awesome? This is coming from the Mai Tai of my project. But it's actually the MIDI bass lines from my other song. So I can essentially preview them together with what I have here. Just one single double click. I can even transpose the bass here. And if I say, yeah, that's exactly how I like it, just import it. And then make any other adjustments that I need to make. So that's another hidden gem for you right there. If you like this format, let me know in the comments and I'm gonna make sure to have a new episode for you very soon. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.